Hello and welcome to my video all about how to transform an artist's palette into this fun clock. I've always liked clock projects that repurpose already existing items, whether that's say tin or a bottle or even a vinyl record. I got this wooden artist palette free with an art magazine years and years ago and I knew it was destined for a clock project. However, it's just taken me until now to actually make it. Okay, so for you to follow along with this project as well, you're going to need an artist palette, some paints and some gesso, some paintbrushes, a drill and a piece of scrap wood, a clock mechanism or movement, a pair of scissors, a ruler or two, a protractor, a pencil, some sturdy wire, some wire cutters and some pliers, or a plate holder, some felt and a fabric marker, although this is optional, some strong glue, and maybe some sandpaper if you're using a wooden pallet that needs some smoothing. In terms of the clock mechanism, I think I rescued mine from a different clock years ago, but it's just a standard inexpensive clock mechanism with three hands. The spindle was only just long enough to go through the thin pallet, but there are mechanisms available with longer spindles if you need them. Right, so step number one is to drill a hole in the artist's pallet. So you first need to decide where you would like the clock mechanism to be attached and then mark the preferred position of the spindle on the front of the pallet. I place mine an equal distance away from three of the sides. Obviously you can't put it smack bang in the middle of the pallet because it's not a perfect circle. So just use your judgement. Then you need to place the pallet on a piece of scrap wood and drill vertically through this mark. The size of the drill bit you use should be just a tiny bit bigger in diameter than the clock spindle. My spindle was just over 5mm in diameter and I used a 7mm drill bit. Make sure to sand any rough areas or rough edges on the pallet before you move on to the painting step. Then to paint the pallet I used two coats of white acrylic paint. However, this was quite a cheap acrylic paint and two coats didn't cover the wood very well. So instead, I recommend painting two to three coats of white gesso or some other white primer. The gesso was much more opaque than the acrylic paint, so that's all I ended up using to cover the palette. Just try to have all of the brush strokes going in the same direction to make it neater. If you happen to have some white spray paint instead, feel free to prime the wood first and then spray it white to give a smoother brush stroke free finish. Next we need to work out where we need to put the painted circles. So we need to work out some angles. So place the palette against the long ruler to decide what angle you want the palette to be displayed at. The ruler here represents a level surface, such as a shelf or a table. Then place another ruler at 90 degrees to this ruler, making sure it also lines up with the hole that you've drilled. Then make very faint pencil marks along the edge of this ruler, one at the top and one at the bottom. These small marks need to line up with the drilled hole, and they will represent the numbers 12 and 6 on the clock. For the next step, you're going to need a protractor, but if you don't have one, feel free to print one out like I have. You'll need to use this to mark the positions of as many of the numbers as you want to represent on the clock. In my case, I represented all the numbers except for 2 and 3. All of the numbers on the clock are 30 degrees apart, so you just need to make sure that the protractor lines up with that central ruler and then mark 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, etc. all the way around. As I said, I missed out the numbers 2 and 3, but for all of the other positions, I just made a very faint mark about 1 cm from the edge of the palette. Note that as the palette becomes elongated towards the right-hand side, the edge gets further away from the spindle, so the pencil marks get further apart. How many numbers you represent and where you position them in relation to the edge of the palette is completely up to you. Then the next step is to paint the circles. So mix up a small amount of as many paint colours as you would like to display on the palette. 
One colour represents one number on the clock and you'll need a different colour for each pencil mark you've made. As you'll see, I painted red, orange, yellow, two greens, two blues, a purple, a pink and a black. I used a brush that turned out to be too bulky, which made it difficult to make the paint as neat as I would have liked. If you have one, use a fairly fine and flat brush for doing the edges of the paint circles. As you can see, I kind of messed up the black circle and it went over the edge of the palette. So once the paint dried, I painted over the edge of it with white gesso and I did three coats. I then repainted it to make it much neater. I also used the gesso to tidy up a couple of stray paint marks as well. So don't worry if you make a little bit of a mistake or a mess because you can always cover it up. After the first layer dried, I could still see the white background through the colours. So I decided to add another coat. I made sure that this second layer of paint was thicker and had more texture. Then I left it to dry. Next, if you would like to add a felt backing to the clock, now is the best time to cut out the shape because it will be too difficult once the clock mechanism is in place. So place the palette onto the felt, draw around it with a fabric marker and then cut out the shape. I'm personally using some quite thick felt base, which is only different from standard felt because it's a bit stiffer, but regular felt can still be used. Make the felt shape as identical to the palette shape as possible. Then leave this to one side. Then for the next step, I needed to make a wire stand for my clock. There are other ways to make a stand instead of using wire, such as the wooden type you see on the back of picture frames. So feel free to use your own idea. You can also make it wall mounted instead if you wish. For my stand, I cut a length of 1.6 millimeter galvanized wire and via trial and error, bent it into shape. Just make sure that the wire that you're using is sturdy enough to hold its shape. I first made a 90 degree bend, 40 centimeters from the end of the wire. Then another after about two thirds of the width of the pallet. And then I cut the wire after another 40 centimeters. The reason I'm using the 40 centimeter measurement is because this is two times the height of the pallet. I then bent each side of the wire shape to form the area that the pallet would rest against. From here, I made two little hooks on the ends of the wire in order to stop the pallet sliding off the front of the stand. Try and make sure that as much of the stand as possible is hidden behind the clock. And also think about the angle that you want the clock to be held at. Then the excess wire is bent backwards on both sides to form the back of the stand that rests on the table. Once that's done, you can then attach the clock mechanism. I initially tried to use double-sided tape to attach the mechanism to the back, but unfortunately there are little sticky out plastic bits that prevent this from working. So I ended up having to use UHU or purpose adhesive instead. Just make sure that the mechanism definitely works before you glue it in place. And then to finish the clock, you just need to push the hands onto the front of the mechanism. Like so. Then just make sure that everything works as it should. As you can see, my second hand got stuck on one of the wire hooks at the front. So I cut off some excess wire and made the hooks much smaller to rectify this problem. And as you can see, it now works perfectly. 
As the last step, I cut a square out of the felt backing to make room for the clock mechanism and then glued the felt in place. The reason that I added a felt backing was to make the back look neater and more finished and also to add a slight black border to the palette. It is totally optional though. And that's it, the clock is now complete. It's an easy project to make and I think the end result looks very effective. I really hope you give it a go yourself and thank you very much for watching.